Thirteen years passed, and the suffering continued. Aku's grasp choked the past, present, and future. But then he came back. Back from the past. Samurai Jack. Watch out! Greetings, fanboys and fangirls. I'm Erod, and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. In 2016, the unthinkable happened. Cartoon Network and Gendy Tartakovsky announced that Jack was back in a 10-part miniseries that would see the fabled samurai reach the end of his quest. All the while, I reached the end of a personal quest. You see, I've been wanting to do a Samurai Jack video since 2010, but I couldn't bring myself to do it because the show had no conclusion. And quite frankly, it made talking about the show all the more depressing, as I couldn't rationalize why something so good would be cancelled. But now, that is not the case. So that day is finally today. I get to talk about Samurai Jack and its conclusion. As per usual, you have been warned of spoilers. I will be talking about this season in its entirety. And I do encourage each and every one of you to watch Samurai Jack from start to finish before you watch this video. But if you're still watching, just for the sake of making sure that you're not out of the loop, The Blood. 50 years have passed since we last saw Jack, but due to a side effect from the time travel, Jack no longer ages. All the time portals have been destroyed. Jack no longer has the magic sword, and he has lost all hope, turning himself into a Mad Max-like warrior of the wasteland, without purpose or direction. But now, after all this time, Jack will be inspired to continue his quest, and the inspiration will come from the most unlikely of sources. I, uh, I like your hair. And dress. I also find it incredibly appropriate that Jack narrates the opening sequence of the final season, all the while Aku narrates the opening of the original run. This makes sense, because Aku represents the beginning of the story, while Jack represents its end. Gotta get back. Back to the past. Samurai Jack. One of the most astonishing things about this season is that even though Gendy and his crew hadn't worked on Samurai Jack for well over a decade, they did not skip a beat. Their writing and storytelling style was just as brilliant as it was 13 years ago. This is very much reflected in the plot of the final season, as it parallels exactly the way the fans were feeling. We lost this great iconic hero, and so did Jack. He's no longer the noble samurai. He became a very stereotypical violent action hero who has no problem using his enemy's methods and weapons against them. A big part of Jack's arc is him finding himself and restoring who he was. Not only did this serve as a great exposition device to reestablish who the character is for those who may not be familiar with him, but it also reflected the feelings and desires of all the hardcore fans. Because even though a lot of us lost faith, we still desperately wanted our hero to come back. Now, due to the fact that the show was now on at a later time, Gendy and his crew could now afford to be more graphic with the violence, which fit in perfectly with the progression of the series, as its audience had matured in the past 13 years, and apparently so did the show. Also, Jack killing people for the first time ever as opposed to robots is the strongest visual cue that our hero has lost his way. This, of course, makes the desire even more intense for Jack to regain his faith and restore his honor. And very few moments in television history have been more fulfilling than the moment when Jack was back. The Missing Episodes Interesting fact, there are 40 episodes of Samurai Jack that are missing. Don't know what I'm talking about? I'll explain. For those of you who don't know your Roman numerals, the last episode of the original run of Samurai Jack, Jack and the Baby, was episode 52. Then the first episode of the final season starts with episode 92, meaning that there are 40 episodes that are unaccounted for. Some have taken this to mean that the window was left open to produce 40 more episodes in the future to bridge the original run with the final season. 
Personally, I sincerely doubt this. I think that Gandhi just did this to signify the passage of time, and that Samurai Jack was never meant to have more than five to six seasons. But if I am wrong and they do produce 40 more episodes, you will never hear this guy complain about that. Are there any hope of Samurai Jack living beyond season five? You never say never, right? Because this is Hollywood and who knows? And they're cartoons. Cast in characters. First of all, I want to express my deepest appreciation to all the voice actors who had bit parts in the original series and came back to do cameos. Such as Sab Shimono, Lauren Tom, Gray Griffin, Billy West, Kevin Michael Richardson, Jeff Bennett, Darren Norris, Corey Burton, Rob Paulson, and of course, everybody's favorite supporting character, the Samurai! Talking about the... Fuck the The Wacky Hat! Of course, the ever famous Tucky Tom. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We all know that everybody's favorite supporting character is the Scotsman, played by John DiMaggio. We're ready, Dad. Whoa, Flora, what in bunny blazes are you wearing? It was an absolute delight to hear everybody's voices again, and as a long term fan, I deeply appreciate their involvement. This time around, Jack actually had an antagonist that appeared in more than one episode. And that was Scaramouche, played by Tom Kenny. Your emergency collect card at Cupid. Please say your name. Scaramouche. No, I have no idea why he sounds like Sammy Davis Jr., but it is awesome. The character served more as a comic relief than an actual threat. But in this very grim, violent season, the levity was appreciated. Oh, yeah. But the most refreshing and exciting addition to the Samurai Jack cast was that of Ashi, played by Tara Strong. What? A main female character in Samurai Jack? Huh, it is a brave new world that we're living in. Ashi's arc is fascinating. We literally see the character evolve in the span of 10 episodes. She starts out as a cult member raised from birth to kill Samurai Jack. But as she gets to know Jack, the more she realizes that her life was a lie and that Aku is the one who must be stopped at all costs. Which leads her to become Jack's ally and eventually, believe it or not, his love interest. Samurai Jack has a girlfriend? Man, I was not kidding about this brave new world. The episode in which they first officially express their affection towards one another is the most brilliant combination of a romantic comedy and a creature feature that I've seen since Shaun of the Dead. So hats off to the writers. And then, of course, in one hell of a twist, it is revealed that Ashi is Aku's daughter. I may tune in for the action, but I stay for the soap opera stuff. This was a very complex and versatile character to play, and Tara Strong did a magnificent job, going from antagonist to audience surrogate to love interest in just a span of a few episodes. And Tara handled each facet of the character spectacularly. Also, is it just my apophenia acting up, or are a lot of Tara Strong's characters seducing generally chaste heroes as of late? And while we're on the subject of possibly meaningless connections, at the beginning of the season, Ashi has the exact same hairstyle as Tara Strong's character from Symbionic Titan, Princess Ilana, which was another Gendy Tartakovsky show that was canceled prematurely. Could this be possible foreshadowing of Symbionic Titan being the next show that Gendy brings back, or just an extreme coincidence? Eh, probably the latter. Also, this is the second time that Tara Strong has played a character that has a demonic father who she takes a stand against. But you were never my father. Okay, 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 that's the last meaningless connection. Like I said, apophenia. Point is, Tara Strong and Phil Lamar shared some excellent chemistry in this series, comedic, romantic, and otherwise. And our hero couldn't have asked for a better leading lady. It's a little uh, crowded. Yes. Oh, something's poking me. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right, let's move on to our main characters, starting with our lord and master, Aku, played by Greg Baldwin. So yes, in 2006, Mako Iwamatsu, the original actor that voiced Aku, sadly passed away. 
And while the creators toyed with the idea of changing the character and giving him a new voice, it was ultimately decided that keeping the performance consistent would serve as a story a lot better. So master impersonator Greg Baldwin was brought in to do Mako's voice. Interestingly enough, this is not the first time that Greg has been brought in to finish one of Mako's performances after his passing, as Greg also replaced Mako as Uncle Iroh in Avatar The Last Airbender. So, was Greg a good Aku? Absolutely! Which is made all the more impressive when you start to consider that he is imitating one of the most iconic voices of all time. And in the final episode, they even play his voice side by side with Mako, and it's pretty seamless and undo the future that is Aku. Not. In the final season, we find a pretty jaded Aku, who has grown bored of being Overlord of Earth, and is depressed by his inability to kill Jack. I just love the idea of a villain who won and had absolutely no plan after his victory. He just sits in his castle with nothing to do, which of course, story-wise, tries to answer a very rare hypothetical question. What does a conqueror do when there's nothing left to conquer? Perhaps annihilating this scum will break me out of my... malaise. But the performance that makes this season work and the MVP of this final installment is most definitely Phil Lamar as Samurai Jack. Unlike the original series, in which Jack would barely speak, Listen to me, warrior. Over the hill and through the woods, there is a great jewel. I, I see. I will find it. You know, and then I'm done. Here, we get far more insight into Jack's psyche, as 50 years of wandering around believing that he had failed his mission has driven Jack insane, and he is haunted by his guilt, his anger, the hero he used to be, and the prospect of suicide. And a lot of these scenes are portrayed as Jack having a series of intense conversations with himself. Meaning that there are about a dozen really good, thought-provoking, captivating scenes that consist of Phil Lamar acting opposite to himself. Be careful. I know. So if there is one person who unquestionably deserves the 2018 Annie Award for Best Voice Acting in a TV Series, it is this man right here. Look, why do you always have to get involved? She chose her way, and now she has to live with the consequences. You'll never understand that it's all my fault. Action sequences. Now, I'm not saying that this show had the best action sequences out of everything ever made, but I'm sure as hell going to imply it. Not only is the animation smooth, detailed, and beautiful, but the action sequences always service the story, not the other way around. While the show is incredibly well known for its action, never did it make the action the centerpiece of each episode. The storytelling was always the focus, and the action was merely there to enhance it. You know, like it's supposed to be. Samurai Jack never did anything action-oriented just because it looked cool. Unlike other people. The lead-in or build-up to each action sequence was always well established, and the action itself served a purpose. And then, on top of all that, the choreography and animation was always spectacular and diverse. Very rarely did you ever see a moment twice. Each sequence was unpredictable and unique, like a real fight. And the creators never cut any corners. The action of Samurai Jack always had the utmost quality. An epic end to an epic series. Okay, I'm about to talk about the final episode in detail, so if you haven't seen it, this is your last chance to stop the video before I spoil it. You've been warned. So after discovering that the woman that he loves is the daughter of his mortal enemy, and under his control, Jack surrenders. Aku, of course, plans to execute Jack in the most poetic way imaginable, having Ashi do it. Yes, he will have Jack meet his demise at the hands of the woman that he loves. 
But in one of the most touching moments in animation history, all the people that Jack saved throughout the course of the series come to his rescue, giving Jack the time that he needs to free himself and free Ashi from Aku's grasp. Which leads Ashi to realize that as Aku's daughter, she has all of Aku's powers, including the ability to create a time portal. Oh no. Man, Ultron was right. Everyone creates the thing they dread. This of course leads to the moment that we waited for for 13 years. Samurai Jack gets back to the past and defeats Aku. And yes, I did cry like a little girl at a Katy Perry concert during the scene. While it might have sucked that we had to wait 13 years to see this moment, something magnificent happened during this long hiatus. Samurai Jack became a legend. In those 13 years, children grew up learning about this epic series and its elusive conclusion and why it was so important for it to receive a proper ending. So it is especially symbolic in the show, where we see the classic characters who represent the long-term fans sharing the legend of Jack with the current generation, who are in full agreement that the events of the show matter. Now, while having all the characters gather around TV sets to literally watch the last episode was a little too on the nose, the joke was appreciated. Get on with it, you blasted bag of bloated- Dad, we can't hear! He's on. Oh, sorry. One of my greatest desires for this final season, as silly as this might sound, was for Mako to be in it, which I know is impossible, but as a hardcore fan, it just isn't Samurai Jack without Mako. But lo and behold, they actually granted my wish, as they used archival recordings of Mako whenever they would show a coup in the past. Not to mention, they played his opening narration at the top of the episode, meaning that in spite of his passing, Mako still technically played a coup in the final episode of Samurai Jack. And that is awesome! As I stated before, this show has a reputation for having great action sequences, and the final episode was no exception, as it contains one of the absolute greatest final battles you will ever see, giving almost every character their chance to shine. But my favorite moment is when the Scotsman reunites with Jack. One of the most famous complaints with critics in the world of entertainment is that when you have more than one female character in a scene, they mostly talk about relationships. And when you have more than two male characters in a scene, they usually fight or do something action-oriented. So I find it especially hilarious that in this show, it was the complete opposite. Whenever you see two or more female characters together, they're generally kicking ass. But the one and only time you truly see two male characters interacting, they talk about relationships. I met someone. <gasps> Who? Her. I don't think she's your type, lad. I have to say that seeing Jack finally complete his quest and kill a coup is one of the most satisfying moments I have ever experienced in my many years of being a fanboy. It was something that I waited to see for so long, something that I thought I would never see. And I have to say that after all this time, it was worth the wait. And the feeling of finally seeing this legendary ending is so big and so extraordinary that it evades description. So I am grateful that I lived long enough to see it and that Gandhi waited to do it right. And now let's talk about the final moment of Samurai Jack. With Aku defeated, Jack and Ashi make plans to get married. But there's a catch. Now that Aku no longer exists in the future, neither will Ashi. So in one of the most heart-wrenching moments in all of fiction, Jack's bride is erased from history on their wedding day. So yeah, even in defeat, Aku still manages to hurt Jack. While this might be traumatizingly sad, I don't think the show could have ended any other way. You can't have victory without sacrifice, and you can't have a plot convenience without consequence. And I also see this as one of this show's many examples of Jack's selflessness. By traveling back in time and killing a coup before he conquered the world, Jack pretty much erased all of his adventures and good deeds. Unfortunately, that included his bride-to-be. But that, fanboys and fangirls, is who Samurai Jack is. The guy who puts the needs of the world before his own. You know, a hero. Final verdict. 
So in conclusion, wait, the show ended and we never found out what Samurai Jack's name is. I mean, his name is not Jack. That's just what those street kids named him. Yo, Jack, that was some awesome show. I never peered upon moves like that, Jack. What? Jack was a ricochet against of a deli. Oh, well, it's not like this is my first time traveling hero with an ambiguous identity. I'm a man of mystery. Anyway, what else can I say? This show was already one of the greatest animated shows of all time while it was still missing its ending. And now that it has one, it has just become even more formidable, cementing its place among other extraordinary cartoons like Batman the Animated Series, Animaniacs, and Avatar The Last Airbender. While other shows may have better animation, more seasons, higher merchandising sales, and more awards on their mantle, they will never ever ever match this show's legendary status. So thank you, Gandhi, for giving us such an awesome, awesome show. <sighs> Guys, I've been waiting eight years to say this. 10 points on the bad attitude meter. Sharpen your katana, get back to the past and give it a watch. Watch out!